Everybody. We made a video last week, but I, uh, I made a big mistake and I forgot to put an adapter in his microphone so the GoPro audio was actually non-existent. <laughs> We don't have to repeat like everything we talked about last weekend, but it really bummed me out because I feel like we had like a really genuine conversation about some of this stuff, and it sucks when you have to like try to repeat that. So there are a couple of things I want to touch on, and I definitely want to talk about your bike again. She's definitely not without her faults, but. She's uh, treated me well so far. But I mean, when I posted this to Instagram, somebody was like, wow, that's got like $2,000 worth of accessories on it. <laughs> and I know you didn't buy everything. I know you bought it with some of the stuff on here. I wish I wish it was only $2,000. <laughs> that's the sad, that's the sad Is part. Is it more than that now that you've added to it? Yeah, probably. It was probably more than that when I bought it too, but all in all, she's a... Uh, Pretty close to having the kitchen sink thrown at her. Got this. What's this front fairing called? Uh, that's the factory fairing. Oh, uh, yeah, I just added the uh, Baja Works windscreen. Okay. Been playing with heights, trying to. So, do you have to bolt this on yourself? Yeah, just drill a couple holes and put some of those. Uh, I forget what those little rubber nut cert things okay. are called, but. But they sell the windscreen. Yeah, I need to get some Barkbuster guards for my handlebars. I've broken levers and. Nah. <laughs> but I yeah. don't really uh, do enough crazy off-road stuff lately. Nah. <laughs> I like these mirrors too. Yeah, the double takes, those were on there when I got it. Um, they're good so far. I dumped it a number of times and they just like to move out of the way. They don't break, so that's always a plus. And you've got the uh, Trail Tech Vapor. I like that a lot. I'm going to put that on my new motorcycle. On the new project. I haven't revealed yet. <laughs> Yeah, I only went that route because I broke the factory speedo cable and figured if I'm going to put money into it, I might as well uh, put something that won't have a tendency to break again. And you said you think that's more accurate than the original? Yeah, the original speedo on this is known to be pretty pretty far off, uh, especially on your highway highway speeds. You tend to be, I want to say it was close to like 5 to 8 miles an hour off. And this thing I can program, so if I swap tires and I get a different different profile tire I can reprogram it so it's gonna read read the same again well it looks good man I know you took the you had like a, a rack on the back of this to carry luggage that was on last time yeah. it's not on this time because you took it off to save some weight um, yeah it's it's I have no idea what it weighs but I remember taking it off I definitely felt the felt the difference and figured eh, no point in lugging it around if I'm I don't have my panniers mounted. Are these the tires that were on it when you got it? They are. They are. It had the Shinkos. I bought some Tusk D-Sport tires and tried those on a trip down south and realized they're just a little more aggressive than what I need for what I'm actually riding. Yet, every time I come out somewhere like here, I kind of wish I had the knobbies again. Yeah, but, yeah. Oh, yeah. I can see that. But in the grand scheme of things, I mean, in all reality, I'm spending more time on asphalt than I am in the dirt. Just how it is i commute on it as much as i can I, I just go to the grocery store gas station whenever i need to so that's the thing it's like whenever someone asks me for advice on tires i tell them get a 50 50 because it's like it's like living with mud terrain tires on a truck the thing they're good at is the thing you're actually doing the least of in most cases yeah we've got uh got mud terrains on the land cruiser 
<laughs> that thing's that thing is uh, loud and oh, really? rumbles and vibrates and wanders. But all right, well, shall we go exploring? <laughs> Timber metal this morning. Oh yeah? Yeah. Did she get up on the wrong side of the bed? Something like that. <laughs> so let's see, where did we start last time? I think I so you bought that DR and you did some work to it so that you can take it on a trip, which I believe is gonna be a two-week trip through Nevada. Uh yeah, I bought the bike strictly just to go on mini trips. The two-week Nevada trip was just kind of slated to be the first one. nerve-wracking for sure but yeah needless to say that trip uh, hasn't really happened yet <laughs> so yeah so you were, you were all set to go and then you uh you kind of backed out because you really you didn't feel good about it yeah there's a fair amount of anxiety leading up to it and just those weird gut feelings you tend to get sometimes that i couldn't happen to shake and You know, that's that's probably true. That's probably what would have happened. Because um, again, this is all kind of new to me too, doing moto camping and stuff like that. So that definitely is a good portion of the anxiety is just, I'm starting from scratch here and kind of just dipping my feet into it. So, but due to my experience camping and being out in the wilderness and on foot and in cars, I bet once I got out there and day two or day three in there everything would have been fine but I don't know it's it's just one of those things where you get that you get that gut feeling that you just can't get rid of and taking that first step is next to impossible when it gets that bad yeah I mean I, I, you know, I do it alone a lot and the real reason I do that I've said before is just because it's easier to make the video yeah camping is a lot more fun with friends oh oh indeed experience but you know if you're doing something that's gonna take you two weeks to do it might be nice to have backup <laughs> if if I would have been going somewhere I'd been to before and somewhere not quite as remote as I had planned that might have actually changed the anxiety level a little bit also okay. I was hitting up a very desolate part of Nevada place I'd never been before at all not knowing anybody in the area not having done any sort of distance camp or uh, distance motorcycle trip like this previously. I don't know, a lot of things just kind of started to compound on one another, so. I think next trip I do, you'll be a part of, and uh, I'm actually excited to try to make that video happen. And I think it's gonna give you a lot of uh, warm fuzzy. Exactly. It'll, it'll be fun, it'll be fun. You and I have camped together before, so. So that'll, that'll make that part easy, but. Adding the motorcycles to the mix will change the dynamic a little bit, but I'm sure it's going to be going to be awesome. Yeah, I'm just going to show you how I do it. Plus, it's like getting used to having the gear and getting comfortable with riding with that much weight on trails like this, for example. Like I've camped off of trails that ride like this, and once you hit it, you're all loaded down, and you, you, you kind of lose confidence. Everything just changes a little bit. <laughs> yeah, you got to be careful. I just wonder how those guys in those big adventure bikes do it. I don't know. S skills. Skill. It definitely takes skills. Did you want to keep going? Yeah. I'm trying to remember what else we talked about last week. I guess uh, a little bit more of your um, emotional state. <laughs> Just in general or leading up to the trip? Uh, in general, like kind of the funk you got into afterwards. Being, uh, being a depressed individual. Yes, yes. At uh, 34 years old, just developing said state of mind is uh, rather interesting and trying to learn all this uh, as I go. It's it's all new. It's definitely uh, something I never expected. 
but it happened and just got to deal with it and start learning how it operates or how it how it works and see the things I can do to combat it. I bet you there's a lot of people right now that are kind of going through that basically just based on the COVID thing. Because when that all started, shit got kind of weird. I know people were emotionally in a different place for a while. I don't know if I'd say COVID had anything to do with uh, with my depression, or at least. You had some other distractions that were happening. Yeah, I had other family issues and life issues that kind of took precedence over COVID this year, so. I've never gone down this one, so I don't know where this trail leads. You've been down this, though? Well, I'm trying to remember that. I don't know the numbers of the trail I went. Like I said, one of these will spit you all the way out over to Needle Rock on the Verde River. I was just trying to avoid cars. <laughs> so, like I said, we'll just cruise them until, uh, until we don't want to cruise that one anymore. We can see what's ahead. See how, see how bad it gets. <laughs> But yeah, I think uh, depression is not something I've personally ever really had to deal with. It's always come in small, small pieces that I can handle and then, yeah, get over them. I think that's something everybody's dealt with. You get, you get periods in your life where you're down and just not really motivated to do much, but usually those instances you can kind of snap out of fairly quickly or uh, they're not. They're not debilitating, especially, or at least for any amount of time, they're not debilitating. So, um, I had that stuff running up most of my life. You get, you kind of get, uh, just not in the mood to do certain things and it's hard to find some energy here and there, but I don't know. I think everybody kind of battles with minor bouts of depression here and there, but something that's gripping enough that you can't shake it. Yeah, yeah, that's what, that's in it, or that's what happened to me this year is I just had an instance and had some life experiences that happened that kind of took me by the neck and put me down. Got me to a point where I didn't, I didn't want to leave the house. I didn't leave the house. I just stayed, stayed put and stayed away. I didn't talk to anybody. I ended up losing a few friends. Uh, lost a relationship. Uh, I don't know. I just got to a point where there were definitely some dark thoughts uh, at some point this summer. But luckily now starting to see starting to see the other end of that. So. Oh yeah, you, uh, you quit drinking over a year ago and I think we talked about how bad this could have been. Oh yeah. Yeah, I quit drinking. It was either June or July last year. I always forget. But I'm like out of breath. Really? Yeah. That's fun. I haven't done riding like this in a long time. I think we'll continue down 1109 there. I don't know what power lines might do to all, all the equipment. <laughs> I think we'll be fine with the power lines we were last time. I think. I don't know. Let's go down 398 then. No, not really, but... I'm not keeping very good track. I hate to keep like, driving the conversation about what we did talk about. Oh, no, it's fine. It's fine. I thought some of the things you brought up were interesting. And one of which was like your career. And how you're saying you're not really motivated by money at all. No, no. I don't think you should be in life, but some people are. And that's, and that's fine, fine too. I mean, if in the end money's necessary, it's mandatory. You're not really going to be able to do much in life without money, unfortunately, but I just don't allow it to be my my main motivation, my main my main drive to do anything. I, mean, I guess you could be motivated by collecting it. There's also just being able to provide, and I think when you have a family and stuff, it, it puts you in a different place as far as considering it. Yeah, yeah, I don't... I don't have any major responsibilities like that. I don't have a wife. I don't have kids. And I've kind of kept it that way on purpose. Not necessarily the wife part, but no kids. I've always wanted to leave, lead a fairly normal, fairly simple life if I could. Um, my main goal in life was to be debt free and have fun. That's, that's about it. It's a good goal to have. Yeah, I 
that's probably part of why you're not motivated to pursue any specific career goals. Yeah, my career path for the past 20 years was uh, not a normal one there as well, but working in the bicycle industry forever. It was just fun. I found a found a niche that kind of needed some people and I had a blast doing it because I was into bicycles at the time and I don't know, it paid me enough to more or less fulfill my desires in life, what I was doing. I was able to go on trips and buy this cool motorcycle and have fun with my cars and go experience places and things as I needed. But yeah, when you have no debt, that's really where it's at. Oh. I've got I've got a little debt. I got a car I still owe money on, but I think that's just kind of you got to have enough debt to have good credit. So I don't want any debt, but if I didn't have any, my credit score wouldn't be as good. <laughs> That's fun. My legs are tired. I hiked eight and a half miles yesterday. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. What are you doing out here? <laughs> doing this? It's like, yeah, I'm still going to riding. Is this the end of it? Oh, no. Where is this taking me? <laughs> oh, God. It's a wash. I'll... I'll take a peek at how far it goes. I'm gonna get good at riding in sand with, if we keep this shit up. I don't see an out. I think I'm gonna turn around. God damn. Holy shit. <laughs> I make it through that sand and then I drop it when I uh, get on hard ground. <laughs> <laughs> I see you. I see you. I I dropped the bike over here. Right? Yeah, I'm good. So I was saying I made it through all this shit, and then I drop it. <laughs> yeah, Arizona's dangerous. Yeah, everything wants to stab you. Yeah, give me this dirt. This is better. I think I worked up a sweat on that one. This is what all my viewers think they're gonna do with an XR. They're gonna go down and washes and stuff. It's definitely fun in theory, but once you actually get out there and practice, sometimes you get in over your head pretty quick. So I think when we go camping, I wanna go up Cave Creek Road. That's the area I'm thinking of. Either that or go out towards, uh, I wanna say it's called Harkahala Peak. There's there's one trail uh, you and I went down and the Land Cruiser and the Forerunner out west. It was like north of Tonopah. That area was pretty cool. Oh, I remember. I'll buy that mine. So I've camped out there a couple times actually. But it would be cool to like go down another route and find some other camp spots. <laughs> Appreciate everybody watching. I hope that everyone enjoys Morgan and I talking. I'm really excited to start doing dual vlogs. I wanted to do it for a while. Because I always come on here with topics that I can talk about for 10 minutes at a time or something. And they, uh, they work, but it's like I'm monologuing to myself. So to be able to have a real conversation, I think, would be another layer that will make it more interesting. So Yeah, solo dialogue can, uh, can go so far. Sometimes you need a little extra. Exactly. I and mean, you can even bring your own ideas into it. And we can actually have other conversations. So that's kind of my goal for this year because I want to try something new. So this, the camping beer vlog, and then this project I'm working on, which uh, I might say more about later, but I'll shoot another video for that. You should make a, take a couple teaser shots. Don't quite give it away, but just a little something, something. <laughs> I think if any individual part of that thing will not give it away. <laughs> close-ups. It's all about the close-up. <laughs> Watch, somebody's gonna know what the hell the bottom of that one looks like. 